What is going on everybody? My name is Isaiah Dominguez, as you probably have gathered. And for my last video of the year and my last video of the decade, I wanted to talk just you and me one-on-one -on -one about my top 10 records of the last decade. We're counting 2010 to 2019. Let's run the tape. So here we are at the end of a decade and when you look back, there's always so much music to comb through. Seriously, a ton of music has been released from 2010 until 2019. It was a very hard list for me to pare it down to 10. It hurt, ooh, like choosing children at some point in time. I just, I have so many emotional ties to these records. I have so many just great songs, great memories, all that kind of stuff. It made it really hard. I started with a list. 62 records over the last that were released from 2010 to 2019 that I listened to all the time. 62 records and I pared it down round by round by round by round. What could I leave behind? What could I leave behind? What could I leave behind? Finally ended up with 12 and it hurt me physically to get rid of those last two. It really did. So I will mention them as honorable mentions at the end. But without further ado, let's get into this list, starting with number one, the 1975's self-titled record, The 1975. First of all, I love this record because it brought a different type of music into my life at that point in time. I had never really heard anything like this Brit pop rock indie invasion that they had, and I'd never heard so much chorus pedal on any records as much as I had heard it on these, this record. I know that they influenced probably hundreds of bands after this record specifically because I've heard a lot of copycat 1975 bands. I think it was a very influential record for them to release and that is why the 1975's self-titled record made it onto my list. Number two, you can't have a top 10 records of the last decade list and not include one Taylor Swift record. That's what I know you were going to say. Taylor Swift record, Swifty, T Swifty. And no, it was not Reputation and no, it was not Lover either. Guess what it was? 1989, of course, it had to be. So, 1989, the reason it's number one for me, especially from all of her releases over the last decade, was it was a brave departure from what she had done in the past. She whole dove into the deep end, both feet, here we go, all in the pop world, knew that she would leave some fans behind in the pop country world. I was okay with that. Uh, and I felt like her songwriting had never been at a higher peak than on this record. Literally almost every single song was either a single or had a major feature. It just was a work of art. And you really, I have a lot of respect for Taylor Swift's career and what she has done to this point. So, Taylor Swift's 1989, number two. Coming in at number three, this record is an important record to me, not only because I played one of the songs at my own wedding, but also because it influenced a lot of what my sound is like and inspired me to become a better guitar player in my own songwriting and not just lean on cowboy chords or major open chords um, and just influence me uh, to play better, more interesting guitar parts, even if you're playing on an acoustic guitar. And that is Ben Howard's Every Kingdom. So Ben Howard, great, great songwriter, phenomenal acoustic and electric guitar player. Every Kingdom was my introduction to his music and it was released in 2011. And it is probably one of the best pieces of folk singer songwriter music that has happened over the last decade. And even extending past that, I would say that this has definitely been one of my favorite records for a long time. So Ben Howard's Every Kingdom coming in at number three. Number four. So I had a really hard time choosing between this record and the band's newest record because I felt like their newest record did a lot of justice for them coming back into the music scene after going on a temporary hiatus. But on the opposite end of the spectrum, I felt like this record was 
more impactful for me at the time that I heard it than the newest record, which I don't feel like I've had enough time to sit and digest just because it came out not too long ago. So that record is War Paint by The Dangerous Summer. If you haven't had the opportunity to check out this band, I would suggest starting with this record because the choruses are huge, the melodies are timeless, the vocals are bitterly honest and gritty, and ju there's just, the production is flawless at this point too. And uh, it's something that has really stood up for me and a record that I still put on every so often just to like get in my feels. Cause sometimes you just gotta get in your feels. Number five, Frightened Rabbit's Pedestrian Verse. I have been a fan of Frightened Rabbit for a really long time and I was super torn up to hear about the loss of Scott Hutchison, not only as a songwriter, but just as a human voice on this earth. I feel like he has had a lot to say, especially about you know, religion, especially about mental health and depression and handling all of those things through like self-medication or through therapy and all that kind of stuff. He very much was a songwriter that wore his heart on his sleeve and you could hear it in all of his records. And Pedestrian Verse was probably the most impactful record for me that they had released that was in the last decade. Now my favorite record from them is the Midnight Organ Fight, but that was released in like 2007 or something like that. So it doesn't make the list. And what does make the list is Frightened Rabbit's Pedestrian Verse. Go listen to it. Stop this video right now. Go listen to that record back to back to back to back to back and then come back and hit the like button. All right, so number six is The Lonely Forest Arrows. Now this record just barely squeaked in because it was released in 2010. So good enough and that's what counts. I. Loved this band, so glad that my friend Kyle Vanderveld introduced me to them because they were not a band that I probably would have just heard about on the street. They weren't very big, they don't exist anymore. Uh, they put out two phenomenal records while they were out and touring and being active as a band. But this one was just the one that, I don't know, it just sits with me and it still sits with me because it's just a timeless piece of indie rock mixed with alternative and it's, just hits that sweet spot for me. Plus they're from the Pacific Northwest, which is also my hometown, homeland, as you might say. Um, if you get an opportunity to look them up or if you get a chance, then you're looking for new music, you should look up The Lonely Forest and you should look up their record Arrows and the single, Turn Off This Song and Go Outside. It's just a phenomenal, phenomenal piece of rock and roll. Next, all right, number seven. Now I couldn't, in my own, my own convictions, make a list of top 10 records and include one band that's been with me since I was in high school, The Main, and their, their record, Lovely Little Lonely, was a phenomenal, all-inclusive piece of art, I would say. So it's one cohesive story that they tell throughout the whole thing, which I thought was a super amazing idea and even harder to execute, which made me respect them even more as artists and musicians and producers of themselves. Anyways, the main lovely little lonely. If you haven't 45 minutes to spend just alone listening to a record, you should put this one on, listen to it front to back and just get in it, man. Just get in it. All right, number eight is Noah Gunderson's Carry the Ghost. Now I felt like I was compelled to include a Noah Gunderson record on this list because he's been one of my favorite artists since he was a kid, basically. He was 16 years old playing coffee shops around my hometown. Um, and I loved his music back then and I feel like he's really grown into his own now. And I felt like Carry the Ghost was the peak of his maturity when he was trying to be optimal singer songwriter. And if you are somebody who likes listening to sad music and somebody who maybe experiences sadness themselves from time to time and likes to understand that other people feel sad and likes to make sure that their sadness feels validated, he is the perfect artist for you and he is the perfect artist for me for that reason exclusively and many other reasons. So I guess not exclusively. 
All right, speaking of Noah Gunderson, coming in at number nine, Phoebe Bridgers, his tour mate for a little while, and also phenomenal singer-songwriter. Phoebe Bridgers is probably one of my favorite songwriters of the current singer-songwriter landscape at this point in time. Um, I just feel like her record is so resonant and very just cutting, and I appreciate that about her, and I appreciate that about her music, and um, I just, yeah, there's nothing not to like about this record, and you should go listen to it, and then you should go and see her on tour, cause it's phenomenal. All right, for my last record, my 10th record, we made it to the very, <coughs> very, very, <coughs> okay, <coughs> We almost didn't make it to the end there. We okay? We doing okay? Okay, cool. Last record of the decade. My 10th favorite record. Not 10th favorite as in like order, but my 10th record on this list. Number 10 is The Story So Far, Under Soil and Dirt. That is my record number 10 on my list. And why? Is simply because pop punk goodness, they don't, no frills, they don't pretend to do anything that they're not trying to do. They don't pretend to be anybody. They don't pretend to hide behind any kind of production. They're just gonna come in, play fast, play aggressive, play pop punk, scream their lyrics, and go home. And I love this record for that exclusively. And it's the first record that made me realize that like pop punk still had a place in modern music landscape, so. The story so far from Undersoil and Dirt. I know a lot of people like other records from them, but that's my favorite one of the last decade. So enjoy it, take a spin, and enjoy that record. So that's it. That's all they wrote. 10 records, my top 10 of the last decade. Every single one of them super impactful. Every single one of them you should go listen to if you're not a fan of those bands already. Now, for some bonus content just for you because you watched this video all the way to this point, my honorable mentions. Now there's two of them, two honorable mentions because I told you I had pared the list down to 12 <clears throat> from 62 and it really hurt me to take these two records off of it. So I figured, who cares? It's my video and I can put two records in honorable mention if I want to and first, is Lights, Siberia. Now, the reason I put this record on there is because it's the first dance EDM electronic music record that made me actually enjoy the genre of electronic music. And I felt like she did a really good job of marrying traditional songwriting with electronic music, and I love that. And I love that she can take her songs and strip them down to just acoustic songs if she wants to. I feel like she does a phenomenal job of that. And it has one of my favorite songs of all time, Heavy Rope on it, and that's my honorable mention number one. Honorable mention number two, what kind of self-promoting musician would I be if I did not include my own record, Holy Ghost by none other than me. That is making it in the top 12 records. I don't care what anybody else says. I'm putting it on my own list because I really enjoyed making this record. I really enjoy the songs on it still. It's one of the first records that I've ever made that I don't, didn't get sick of listening to during pre-production and post-production. And <clears throat> when it was released out into the world, I still enjoy listening to it. That being said, this is the actual finale of the video. Thank you so much for tuning in and listening to my top 10 records of the last 10 years, of the last decade, 2010, 2019, what do you think? Good list, bad list, heavy weighted on one side, not so heavy weighted on the other side? Let me know in the comments. Comment your top 10 records of the last decade or comment your top 62 records of the last decade. I'd love to see it and if anything, I'd love to hear new music and check out new artists moving into the next decade. As always, if you like the video, please like the video. If you like the channel, if you like this kind of stuff that I'm making right now, why don't you go ahead and subscribe and tell all your friends to do the same because that would be awesome and that makes this kind of stuff fun. Just interacting with other people is what I really enjoy about doing this. 
Hope you have a good next 10 years. Make it great, fill it with great music, and write the best songs you've ever written. And if you're not a songwriter, listen to the best songs you've ever listened to. All right, see you in the next one.